Good day, guys, and welcome to another NRL 2020 season review. As we now move into the top eight, we're going to be speaking about eighth place, or as I like to call them, Cronulla Sutherland. Just making up the numbers, Sharks. So the Sharks began their season with a 22-18 loss over the Rabbitohs, a game that they never really had too much control of. Uh, two good tries from Sione Katoa, who obviously one of their new recruits, who was showing really good signs of form. In round two, though, I would argue that they had this game on a plate in the first half, and they just ruined it in the second half, leading 4-2 against the Melbourne Storm, uh, keeping them trialless by the end of the first half, but... In the end, the Storm ran away with it. There were three penalty goals kicked by Cameron Smith, two by Sean Johnson. Close game, but unfortunately for the Sharks, couldn't get the job done. The following week, after two back-to-back -back losses, it was a must-win game for them against the West Tigers. And the Tigers coming away here at 28 points to 16. So really bad start for the Sharks and for the Sharks to lead at half-time. Uh, both of these games was not looking good as they headed into round four. So three straight losses to start the season. A lot of people had the Sharks bottom for them. We looked to be right. But then, travelling up to the Cowboys' new stadium where they were defeated by the Bronco, they were demolished by the Sharks. I guess not demolished, but a decent win. 26 points to 16. Uh, three tries to five as well. And uh, at this point, Josh Morris had left the club. Josh Dugan finding a role in the centres there. Following week, a rivalry game against the Dragons at Campbelltown. I was quite surprised here. I think I did tip the Dragons. I could be wrong. Dragons coming away with a 30-16 victory before the Sharks got back on track against the Dogs, 20-18, to finish off round six. The Cronulla Sharks do not and cannot beat the Manly Seagulls. It's been a known fact for years, the bogeyest of bogey teams. But 2020 was an absolutely insane year. We saw some weird stuff, but none weirder than the Sharks at Central Coast. 40 points to 22 over the Seagull. No Trevojevic, but still a very good, solid team expected to win this one even though it would have been a tighter game, I thought. But the Sharks, very good win for them, coming together, uh, scoring seven tries against the Seagulls here, and then going on to beat the Titans in a big scoring one, 40 points to 10, so clocking up 40 points at this point. And then they ran into the Penrith Panthers in round nine, where they did have some good attack, 24 points scored. But unfortunately, the Red Hot Panthers, they scored 56 so uh, this definitely killed the Sharks' momentum at this point. They went back to Central Coast Stadium and flogged, absolutely whooped the New Zealand Warriors, 46 points to 10. One of the most boring games I have ever attended, in my opinion. There's a vlog on the channel. So moving into round 11, into seventh place, uh, t six wins and five losses at this point in the season. They played the Dragons, very close game, arguably the Dragons. Uh, there were some tough calls in this game, but let's not get into controversy. 28 points to 24, Sharks coming away, winners in that one. But let's get to this game, one of my personal favourite games of football all year, the Broncos and the Sharks. There were so many different lead changes throughout this. The Sharks fielded a very different looking team. They had the lead 18 points to 14, but the Broncos were competing really well. Uh, Talakai was a monster for them in the centres. Jackson Ferris in the centres. Uh, Braden Trindle is their halfback. Lots of names that you don't really know, but they all did their job. Royce Hunt and Tag Wilton off the bench were huge, and they came away with a 36 to 26 win over the Brisbane Broncos, who were struggling, but I think the Broncos have one of their best performances. They came up against the Eels in an extremely wet weather footy close game. 14 points to 12 loss over Parramatta. And then they played the Gold Coast Titans. 
30 points to 18. Titans were able to keep it a lot closer as they were growing some form, which I spoke about towards the end of the season. Thumped by the Penrith Panthers, who were at this point, I believe, 11 straight wins, 38 points to 12. Beating the Cowboys at home, 28 points to 12. And then a loss to the Newcastle Knights, 38 points to 10 in this one at Newcastle. Kalen Ponga scoring a hat-trick. Ronaldo Mulatalo scoring. A Chad Townsend being sent off after actually just getting back a few games. So uh, this period, for the most part, was fairly good. And then they came into a contest in round 18 against the New Zealand Warriors. And I'm just double-checking. At round 16 and 17, they sit in 8th place. West Tigers and Warriors all have a chance to make the 8. I think the Dragons were a chance but at that point, but they kind of dropped off. Uh, but this was a must-win game against the Warriors, and they did it. 22 points to 14. Heartbreak for the Warriors after the year they had, which was phenomenal. But the Cronulla Sharks seal 8th position in the comp. In round 19, they were absolutely done and dusted when beaten by the Sydney Roosters, 34 points to 18. Huge win. Obviously, the Sharks have sec secured a spot in finals, but not a very good performance against quite a strong Roosters side. Round 20, their, well, you would say final match, but they've obviously made the final. Round 20 against the Canberra Raiders, they decide to rest a chance nickel Klockstad. A Jack Whiten, I believe Josh Papali was rested. I can't remember. Uh, so many juniors in this squad, it's not funny. But they were able to put on a massive scoreline, beating this pretty good strength Sharks. Seven tries to five, 38 points to 28. At halftime, the Raiders had a 14-point lead, but the Sharks kind of came back into it. Following week, they played the Sharks in the first week of final. And they took the lead at half time, but the Raiders too good, 32 to 20. Now, if the Sharks want another finals appearance in 2021, they've definitely got the draw to do it. Playing the Broncos, Bulldogs, Cowboys, Dragons twice. But you've also got teams like the Knights, Panthers, Raiders, Storm, who we expect to probably be in the top eight. Uh, Parramatta, Rabbitohs, Roosters only once. So it's a fairly good draw. They welcome Luke Metcalf from the Manly Seagull and Aidan Tolman from the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, both signed for the 2021 season. They lose Cameron King to retirement and Scott Sorensen the, uh, coming through to the Panthers. Off contract, lots of players through 2021. So guys, thanks for watching another NRL season review. Make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be another episode of Let's Talk Footy dropping in the next two weeks, so keep an eye out for that one. I'll be dropping some small hints over on the Instagram page. If you haven't checked out my chat with Bloke in a Bar, go and check that one out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys next time.